I made a video over a year ago. And I know that because it was filmed outside of my old office where I used to work. This video was simply called Norwood 1 to Norwood 2 Transition. And TJ left this comment, quote, I'm very confused about my hairline. It's straight across like a Norwood 1, but my temples are round and deep enough to be considered Norwood 2 or maybe Norwood 2.5 or 3. The pictures of the scale are a bit confusing. My hairline hasn't moved though. Age 24 currently, and looking at some old pictures of me, it's been like this for at least five years. Could someone clarify what is going on with my hairline? Do I just have a weird hairline naturally, or am I on the way to being Norwood 2 or 3? End quote. I hold the answer to that question. Thank you for asking. Now, what we have to keep in mind is, with the Norwood chart, this is a generalization. This is not a universal rule. In the same way with my videos, when I talk about hair loss theories, they're not true. These things are not true all the time, but if there's a pattern and they're true most of the time, then it's something to at least consider in the same way, like my beard theory. If you can grow a full beard by the time you graduate high school, you're more likely to be the guy that's gonna be experiencing balding sooner in life noticeably by age 35 and if you are one of those guys you're most likely to be balding the rest of your life compare that to a guy who doesn't really show any signs of balding nothing worse than a norwood 2 by age 35 with no diffuse thinning he's probably going to be hanging on to his hair most of the rest of his life that's a generalization it's a pattern it doesn't mean it's true all the time and that's the same way that we need to look at the norwood chart this is true much of the time but it's not true for everyone. So what's being described in the video is a hairline that's straight across like a Norwood 1, but then the temples are more like a Norwood 3. Now, uh, in some ways, I'm almost the opposite of this. My temples aren't really not that bad at all, but my hairline definitely goes back more like the Norwood 2.5. So if my temples were actually worse, I think it would make my hairline look worse. I think part of the grace I've got with my hair is that my temples aren't that bad at all, comparatively speaking. So yeah, I mean, it's totally possible. We can have a mixture of these things. You can have the straight across, straight across hairline of Norwood 1 with, this, with the, the severe temple receding of a Norwood 3. Whereas if I'm, people say I'm Norwood at two and a half, but we could also see be said that my temples don't look as severe as a 3 that I'm not even maybe much worse than a two when it comes to my temples. So yeah, you can you can mix and match these. Some would even say that while I'm two and a half on my hairline with the diffuse thinning and the thinning going on back here that I'm almost like a two and a half combined with the beginning of a five. And that's a possibility. So we just have to look at this as a generalization. But yeah, I totally, I know guys that have very severe temple receding which is, you know, a, it's that concept of, of a one, but putting it to the extremes, but because they have no diffuse thinning and they have that hairline across, you would never think anything if you're just looking at them straight across. So yeah, my answer is, could it be that that's just your hairline? Yeah, and it, it could just be the way your hairline is maturing. It's no definite sign that you're going to go bald or have a receding hairline. Ultimately, only time will tell. And it's that way for everyone. A lot of people even will end up with a Norwood too, and stay that way pretty much the rest of your life. There's a chance I may stay this way for the rest of my life. It, it could happen or it might not. But if you would have known me when I was 24 and you saw that I was Norwood too at age 24 or even started noticing at 20, 20, 21, you might think that I would have a very obviously noticing, noticeable receding hairline at, at now at age 37 and a half, and I don't. So we do our best to come up with these theories and patterns to try to predict hair loss. But ultimately, they're not foolproof. There's always gonna be exceptions to the rule, and I think what's been described in this comment is somewhat of an exception to the rule. And I very much appreciate that comment being shared because I think that's a, it's an important message that needs to be shared with every, everyone. 
Yes, it is important to look at patterns and generalizations, but when we fall outside of that, we can accept that that's part of a generalization, that it's not true for everyone, as we are trying to predict something that is largely predictable, but ultimately unpredictable. Thanks for leaving that comment. Glad you're here. Chances are that comment may lead to more comments, and then we can talk more about this the perceived predictability of a receding hairline. We work with patterns, but we shall not get thrown off guard when we find an exception to the rule. Good comment. Thanks for leaving it. Thanks for being here. And as for everyone else, the comment section is for you too.